What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how you can set up your own dedicated server completely for free in Soulmask using your own hardware. Let's get into it. Obviously, you can play Soulmask with your friends without any kind of dedicated server. Simply, whenever you're hosting the game, click on your map and you'll find an invitation code at the very top you can send to your friends without having to do all that much setup. Simply allow other players to join, set the max number of players, probably a password, and fire into your game. You can also mess with quite a few options in the advanced option settings to get even more out of your server, which is nice to do here as we have a GUI to do it from. When we host our own dedicated server, it's not going to be as easy. You'll still have options like all of these here. It'll just be in a slightly different form. Anyways, you'll see what I mean. Now that we've covered that, let's get into setting up a dedicated server for the game. Just keep in mind it is early access, things are bound to change, but in the description down below you'll find a link to the official guide that Soulmask have written, which outlines a lot of what we'll be covering today, but not everything. There'll be some tips and tricks in here that you'll find definitely very useful. Let's get into it. Alright, so first of all, you're not able to download the Soulmask dedicated server on Steam by just searching for it and checking your library, like you are some other dedicated servers, such as all of these ones over here, for example. Example. For this, we'll need to use Steam CMD, another tool from Valve themselves, officially, that allows you to download this dedicated server, among many other things on Steam. In order to get it, click the link down below, which should be a direct download to steamcmd.zip. You'll also find a link to the official Valve Steam CMD page if you'd like to learn about what exactly this tool does. The download link is also right over here. It's the small number one. Anyways, let's open the zip and extract it somewhere, like a folder on our desktop. Don't worry, the wallpaper didn't just change. Anyways, making a folder here, I'll call it, let's see, Soul Mask Server, and I'll place Steam CMD in this folder, just like that. Now, in order to download our server, we'll need to run a command, but in order to update it in the future and keep it updated, we'll need to run the same command. For that reason, I'll be creating a new bat file, so new text document, highlighting everything, including .txt, and we'll call it Soul Mask update.bat. As such, we'll click yes when it prompts us for a name change, and we'll open this with any text editor such as Notepad. If you're not able to rename it and remove the .txt and the file type doesn't change, click view at the very top, followed by show, and make sure file name extensions and hidden items are both ticked. On Windows 10, there'll be a view tab in the ribbon at the very top and the same buttons on the far right. Anyways, once you've renamed this file and opened it, simply look in the description down below for this line over here, Steam CMD, Login Anonymous, App update 3017310, which is the Soul Mask dedicated server ID, validate plus quit. All we need to do now is run the bat file and it'll start Steam CMD. That should, first of all, download a couple of different files. And then, shortly after, once it's done downloading all of these files, it'll start downloading the actual server files themselves. This could take a while depending on the speed of your internet. When it's done downloading, you'll find it in the Steam Apps folder here, followed by Common and Soul Mask dedicated server for. Windows. There we go. The window will suddenly close, and now we've got our server downloaded into this folder here. In this folder, you'll find a start server.bat file, and in this is the command required to actually start your server using the program here. There's nothing we need to do, just launch start server.bat, and your server should immediately begin. So, there we go. A window flashes, the server starts, and opens up in a window like this. And there we go, our server should be running at this point. What you'll want to do now is quit your server, so we can start customizing it now that it's initialized. The official wiki for setting up a dedicated server, which we've been following thus far, tells us to use Telnet in order to shut down our server. This tool should be included with most Windows systems, and in order to safely shut it down, we'll be using these two commands here. So, opening up a new command prompt or terminal window, we'll be typing in Telnet 127001 as such, space 1 followed by 4 8s, and we'll hit enter. This should then connect to our server, and we can type help to interact with the server. So, for example, save world to save our server, or any of the above options in order to close our server after a specified amount of time. This save and exits the game, so we shouldn't need to run save world separately. Anyways, what we'll do is run quit, followed by 180, as they suggest, and this should get our world to save and close, I would think within three minutes. You could probably use a much shorter number here in order to get it to save and quit faster. Anyways, once that's done, we can get to customizing our server. In order to customize your server, we'll need to copy this start server.bat file, paste it in the same folder, and we'll be renaming this to start whatever your server's name is. So I'll just say troubleshoots 
server as such, and we'll open this with a text editor. Then inside of here, we'll replace the line that says start server with call, followed by the name of the original file. So start server dot bat as such. Then we'll need to add some things to the end of this line over here in order to customize our server. So for example, we can set our Steam server name to whatever we want inside of quotes here. So troubleshoots server, for example. We can set a max number of players, 50 as an example. Set a password using PSW and set a secure password here. Obviously not copying what I have. Set a admin password, which you can use in game to get admin permissions. This should be incredibly secure. So something nobody can guess. And you can choose whether you want your server to be PVP or PVE by using minus PVP or minus PVE. I'll leave it as PVP, for example. That's it. We'll save the file. And now we should be able to run it starting our customized server. So running our start troubleshoots server.bat file over here, which you could have named anything. It should now start up our actual server once more. Your server should save everything into the WS followed by saved folder. In here should be all of your world progression, player progression, configuration, etc. This is the folder you should make sure you have backed up, especially if you're going to be moving your server or anything like that. Anyways, once our server's started, we should be able to actually go ahead and join it. You'll find thousands of other startup options on the official wiki page, which once again you'll find down below. And also some information on setting up your server. If you're going to be using Steam CMD on Linux instead, it uses a slightly different number and slightly different startup technique. Anyways, besides that, we have the engine.ini file in WS saved, config, Windows Server or Linux Server, and you should find an engine.ini file. If you don't and you'd like to customize your server's ports and things like that, you can create a new text document, once again renaming everything to engine.ini, and inside of here, you can copy and paste in this section over here, which tells us what port and query port our server will be using, choosing PVP, max players, or setting a name for the server, which should be overwritten by whatever we have set up in our start options, but should you choose to add this engine.ini file and customize options in here, make sure you set these to match what you have in your start server.bat file. So for example, my server's name, max players, PVP, I'll set to true, and that seems fine. I'll save this. When we restart our server, it should take all of these settings into account and use them. Anyways, for now though, just keep in mind that the port is 8777 and 27015. Alright, joining our server. I'll start the game in Steam, then head across to online game this time, okay, and we should be able to stop loading, head across to private servers, then wait for this to refresh, and we should see a list of servers here nearby to us. Our server should appear on this list at some stage, but for now it may not, and that's okay. We can use the connect directly to server button instead, and we can punch in our details here. So your IP will either be localhost or 127.0.0.1 if you're playing the game on the same computer you're hosting on, which for now we'll stick with, port by default is 8777 and password, if I set one, should match exactly what we set up. Mine was secured password. So I'll put that in here and connect. If you look over at our server over here, you should see that we're connecting and there you go, there's my username and shortly after, you should see in the console that joining has been succeeded and you'll finally be in game. Creating your player, there we go, giving them a name, so there's a good leader's name, bam. We're now in the game, other people should be able to join and play with us, fantastic. Although, not really. At this point, you'll be able to connect and probably people sitting next to you on the same network. There's a couple more things we need to do to make sure people over the internet can join us. If your server doesn't show up on this list here, or other people are not able to join you, you'll need to do two more things. That's making sure port 8777 and the query port are allowed through your firewall or antivirus's firewall, and probably port forwarding as well. It sounds scary, but it's actually super simple. First of all, in the description down below, you'll find this bit of code here, probably on my website, on a page similar to the one over here, in a section that looks like this. I've still yet to write it, so you'll find it down there when it's done. Clicking the copy button here, we should be able to take all of these commands specific to Solmask, then paste them into an admin PowerShell. So hit start, type in PowerShell, and right click this, then choose run as admin. Inside the window that pops up, simply paste these in and hit enter a few times just to make sure that all of them run properly. And just like that, now all of these ports over here should be opened, both TCP and UDP, through our Windows firewall, allowing other people to connect to us on the same local network. In order to 
allow people to connect to our server through the internet, there's one extra step, port forwarding. This usually sounds pretty scary and it really shouldn't be. Essentially, you'll need to log into your router. I've got an example router over here as all of them are completely different. I can't tell you the steps for your exact router, but once you've logged into it, somewhere you should find a port forwarding or application forwarding section. In here, you should be able to punch in certain ports, sometimes a range, sometimes only one at a time. How many to port forward all of these ports here? So 8777 and 27015. I can only enter one of them over here as such for both internal and external protocol should be TCP and UDP. Otherwise, we need to select these separately. So add it once as TCP, then once as UDP. I can select a combined one here. So that's what I'll do. And finally, a local IP. This is the IP address of your computer. To find that out, open up a new terminal and run IP config. Hit enter, then find the way that you're connected to the internet. In my case, it's ethernet. And you can see my IP address is 192.168.150. Therefore, what I'll be typing in here should just be 50 as it's already got the first few numbers filled in. Then I'll click add new. And just like that, I've now port forwarded one of the two ports that we need to do. Let's do the other one, 27015. I'll copy this into both the internal and external TCP and UDP. Once again, 50 and add. There we go. Now we successfully port forwarded our server. That's it. If you have multiple routers between you and the internet, you'll need to port forward at each hop. So the router that you're connected to will need to point to your computer. The router that that one's connected to will need to point to the next router along in the chain, all the way pointing towards your computer that's hosting the server. That's it. If you're confused, you will find further information down below as I've got much more detailed guides on port forwarding. Anyways, running your server once more, so Steam Apps, Common, Soulmask, and our custom start file, you should be able to join it and of course have your friends join as well. That's it. You now know how to set up your own dedicated Soulmask server on your system or another one completely for free as it's running on your own hardware using your own internet. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to Superior Emerald for being an ultimate supporter of mine. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.